All right, today we're gonna do a little bit of polishing on our McLaren Speedtail here. And we have got a special guest that we're going to bring on set. I think you're gonna like it. Stay tuned. We're gonna go on those details next. Hi, I'm Todd Cooperider with Esoteric. Today, like I said, we're taking a look at this McLaren Speedtail. Make sure that you stay tuned through the end of the video because we've got a special guest that we're gonna bring on camera here. All right, this Speedtail. First of all, if you don't know anything about this car, it is um, a very rare vehicle. It is made with one thing in mind, and that is top speed. I mean, just look at the shape of it. That's what this is designed for. Another interesting feature is if you take a look, this steering wheel is right in the middle of the car. I've gotten the opportunity to drive this car a couple of times, and I gotta tell you, it's a lot more difficult to drive a car in the center than you think. You're like, staying in the middle of the lane is not a big deal. Well, actually it throws you off quite a bit. Also, this has no side mirrors. There's monitors on it and there's cameras on the side. That's a lot different than looking at a mirror, what we're used to. And you really can't see anything behind you either. And this thing's about 97 feet long, but really cool car. We've worked on this before. The customer had to have some changes. We had to go in and do a paint protection film on the back section of it, replace it. Uh, a lot of work, our guys did a fantastic job. Another thing that uh, they had done to it, when this car came in first, it didn't have the roof scoop. So while it was in having uh, the repairs done, they had the factory roof scoop installed on it. Now we need to take a look at it to see what kind of polishing that we want to do on this. With the shape in it and with the fact that it's got about a thousand holes in here, you really can't do anything with paint protection film. So we're going to do some polishing, paint correction, then we're gonna do some coating on it so that it's ready to go. So how do you approach something like this? Well, it's just like any car. You know, if somebody calls and says, hey, I got this car coming in, what should my approach be? It all comes down to the test spot that you're doing. You have to figure out what that paint needs to accomplish the goals you're going for. In this case, we're going for a very high level of correction. So as I look at it, I can tell, you know, like any kind of factory part or so that was done, it's got a lot of swirls in it. I know this is softer paint because we've worked on some of the other pieces uh, of it too. So with that in mind, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a test section uh, with like a one-step process. In this case, we'll be using the Rupus Yellow Pad, Sonax Perfect Finish, and we're gonna see how it does. Does it get enough correction? Does it give us a, a good enough finish on it? If not, we'll make some adjustments from there. I've got a couple of different options. I've got my microfiber cutting a uh, disc if we need to do any compounding. I've got yet a softer finishing pad if we need that, if, it, if it's gonna be that finicky. So let me go into this kind of process, see what it's gonna take to get the job done. And here, I'm just gonna put a little bit of perfect finish here on my pad. And let's see how this is going to react. Now I gotta battle the sound of the uh, air compressor in the background, so excuse us for that. Now we'll wipe things off, take a look at what kind of correction that we got. Now this did a really good job. I got a couple things left over right on the curvature, which I think that I can take care of that still with my yellow pad and perfect finish. The haziness is gone. The clarity is good. Also, it comes back ultimately to you know, what the, what the expectations are with the customer, what you've discussed. In this case, I know they want this thing to look as good as possible. Now, I'll continue on. I'll do all the rest of the polishing uh, on this great big piece here, work uh, around the holes, then we'll clean everything up. I'll have uh, the rest of the team come in a little bit later, do all the coating on top of the surfaces, and we should be good to go. So kind of the lesson here is, it's all about the test spot, finding out what you need to do, 
don't just automatically think that you need to do a multi-step correction on everything that you're working on. Customer might, might not uh, uh, want that level. Uh, you don't just throw it in for free, so to speak, if you're a detailer. Even those of you at home that are working on things, don't get too intimidated by the fact that, oh, I gotta do a multi-stage or whatever. Learn that one step. You'd be surprised and amazed just how good of a job that can do. Okay, I said that there's gonna be a special guest here. Uh, and in, you know, it, it's kinda cool. I've got this car that's designed for speed. You know, this is a modern car. Um, it, it is designed to go fast. I can't remember the exact figures. I think this is upwards of about 250 mile per hour car. Now, the special guest is not a person. The special guest is a car. Here we have a very rare Jaguar XJ220. This is from the early 90s. This car was made specifically to break uh, speed records. So you have an early 90s supercar. The 220 kind of meant that's what they were looking for is 220 miles per hour. I believe the official speeds on this was about you know 213, but still you think about it, early 90s to be able to get that kind of speed. Uh, super rare. Uh, also, if my memory serves me correctly, this was a uh, a V6 twin turbo, which is kind of unheard of back then. Uh, originally, they were going to do a, a V12 in it, but went with the twin turbo setup. Really cool car. Most people will never get the opportunity to see one of these things. So to have this car from the 90s that was designed specifically for top speed and to have a modern supercar here that's designed specifically for top speed is pretty darn cool. Hopefully you got a better understanding of what we do when it comes time to polishing a car. Figure out first what you need. Um, don't just jump into the deepest level. I like to uh, um, preserve as much paint as possible. Use the least aggressive methods necessary. As always, we appreciate you hanging out with us here on the Esoteric channel. We look forward to seeing you in our next video.